Welcome back to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. I'm so glad you're here with us today. If you're new here, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it's all connected. Today we're going to be talking about another commonly tested autoantibody, the anti-Smith antibody, or anti-SM is how it's listed on your lab report. This is an autoantibody commonly checked when someone has a positive ANA, and it can lead to a lot of confusion and anxiety. So we're gonna talk about all things anti-Smith today. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure you hit the like, you hit the subscribe, you share this with anyone you think can benefit from the information. So let's just get to it. get into the anti-Smith antibody, I just want to take a brief moment to talk about an exciting new online course, free, that I've put together that I really hope makes your life easier. It's called the Productive Rheumatology Appointment Guide. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that my main goal is really to help you understand and navigate your autoimmune or rheumatic condition. And of course, in order to do that, you need to know the basics of the condition, about the treatments and the tests, but I also like to offer some key points and questions that you can then go back to your own doctor and kind of continue the conversation. I like to think of these videos as a jumping off point to a conversation between you and your rheumatologist. Now, I know firsthand that one of the key elements to getting someone feeling better is that working relationship between the doctor and the patient. When you're diagnosed with a autoimmune or a rheumatic condition, you are thrown into the deep end of a very complicated medical world. And no one teaches you how to do it. No one teaches anyone how to be a patient with a chronic medical condition. The learning curve can be steep, and I built this guide to try to make it a little easier. This guide will take you through a framework of how to think about your symptoms, your diagnosis, how to approach treatments and medications, and how to make the most out of these ridiculously short doctor appointments. Think of this as inside knowledge into how rheumatologists think and how they recommend you think about your condition. Now, obviously everyone's situation is going to be different, but this guide was really built for anyone who finds themselves needing a rheumatologist. You don't need to have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis to be able to get something out of this guide. It's really meant for everyone. So if you're interested, I really hope you check it out. You can access it in the description box below. There's a link. It's totally free, so there's really no excuse. And I just really hope it makes your journey just a little bit easier. Okay, so let's get back to anti-Smith antibody. So let's just start at the beginning. What is an anti-Smith antibody? Well, the anti-Smith antibody is an antibody whose target is the Smith antigen. And the Smith antigen, when I use that word antigen, antigen is just the protein that's found within your body that is the target of the antibody. So remember, every antibody is specific to a target, and we call that target the antigen. So the Smith antigen is found within the nucleus of our cells. So it is a nuclear antigen, hence, the Smith antibody is an anti-nuclear antibody. So it's one of those ANAs. Now, the Smith antigen was discovered in the 60s, and it was found pretty much from the beginning to be pretty specific for lupus. But that doesn't mean everyone with lupus will have this antibody. In fact, only about 25% of lupus patients will have an anti-Smith antibody. When it was discovered and it was found to be so specific with lupus, the American College of Rheumatology actually included the presence of an anti-Smith antibody in their long list of criteria that they put together to help doctors make a lupus diagnosis. Now, shortly after the discovery of the anti-Smith antibody, they discovered the anti-RNP, the anti-SSA, anti-SSB, and a whole slew of other nuclear antigens that are the targets for various different autoantibodies. So it really was the first one that kind of kick-started this discovery and understanding of genetic material and molecular biology. So it really was like a big deal. So why do we call it anti-Smith? 
Well, it's really an old-fashioned remnant of the way we used to label things when we discovered. So they used to label them oftentimes after the patient in which it was discovered. And so the anti-Smith antigen and anti-Smith antibody was discovered in the blood of a lupus patient by the name of Miss Stephanie Smith. Now, Miss Smith was diagnosed with lupus in 1959 at the age of 15, and she was being cared for at the Rockefeller University in New York City. Unfortunately, um, she had a lot of complications from lupus and succumbed to lupus at the age of 22. Now, her treating physician, Dr. Eng Tan, who was also one of the scientists to discover the anti-Smith antibody, has noted that she was a very talented painter and has actually published one of the paintings that he has in his possession. He is currently a professor emeritus at Scripps Research, and I really just bring this up just to highlight that this discovery was not very long ago, and our knowledge of autoantibodies, and specifically autonuclear antibodies, and their relationship to lupus and autoimmune disease has really exploded in the past 60 years. All right, so let's talk about when you're gonna have an anti-Smith antibody checked. So, as I said, the anti-Smith antibody is an anti-nuclear antibody. So it's very common to be tested after someone has found they have a positive ANA blood test. So this is a common scenario. You go to your doctor and you're having some fatigue, maybe some rashes that we can't explain, some hair loss or even some joint pain, and your doctor has a concern for something autoimmune or lupus. And so the first screening test they're going to do is the ANA or anti-nuclear antibody. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I would really highly recommend you check out my videos on anti-nuclear antibodies. Um, I'll put the link in the description box below. So the ANA is the first screening test done. And as I talked about in those videos, it is a good screening test, but it's not necessarily specific to lupus. Even though whenever you Google it, oftentimes lupus will be what pops up. It can be seen in a lot of different conditions, and it can also be seen in people who have no medical conditions. So it's really a good first step, but it's certainly not a perfect test. So if that test comes back positive, then what we need to do is dig a little deeper. And the way we do that is we then test for a lot more specific autoantibodies. And a lot of our common lab uh, companies that we use will have various different lupus panel tests. And in those lupus panels, they will be testing for various different other, more specific anti-nuclear antibodies. And one of them will be the anti-Smith or anti-SM is how it's listed on your report. So some of the other anti-nuclear antibodies that this panel will check will be um, uh, anti-RNP antibody, anti-SSA antibody, anti-SSB, SCL70, anti-centromere, maybe some thyroid antibodies. They might also check the double-strand DNA, although sometimes that's usually something else. Um, so it's really kind of upwards of 10 to 12 different antibodies that these panels will check. And it's the results of those antibodies plus your symptoms plus any other lab abnormalities like anemia or kidney issues, liver issues, whatever, all of that goes into the thought process of the doctor when coming up with a diagnosis. Even though these antibodies are more specific than the ANA, you can't really rely on them to make a diagnosis. Now, the anti-Smith is a little special. Anti-Smith is very specific for lupus. And if you've watched any of my other autoantibody videos, you'll know that I always say none of these tests make a diagnosis, that you always have to take into account someone's symptoms and you know, overall how they're doing and the entire clinical picture, that no one blood test makes a diagnosis. Well, Anti-Smith comes pretty close because it really is so specific for lupus. But as I said earlier, only a quarter of lupus patients will have this particular blood test. So just because you don't have an anti-Smith antibody doesn't mean you don't have lupus. Okay, so now you have your result. How do we use it? How do we interpret it? Well, as I said, because it's so specific for lupus, if someone has a positive anti-Smith antibody, they really do deserve a full evaluation by a rheumatologist if it hasn't already been happening. 
Something to keep in mind is the anti-Smith antibody is not one of the antibodies that we will repeat. It doesn't go up and down with disease the way double-stranded DNA can or the way complements can. And again, I'll put the links in the description box below to those videos. It's really just a positive or negative. So if you've had it done, it doesn't necessarily need to be checked again unless your symptoms really change or um, a doctor's suspicion of lupus really goes up um, based on your symptoms. But once it's positive, we just note that it's positive, and once it's negative, we just note that it's negative. Okay, so how does all this information apply to you? As you may or may not know, I am a huge proponent of understanding your own autoimmune condition and its particular flavor. And this is really important when you have lupus because there are so many different flavors of lupus out there. And one of the ways that you're gonna get yourself back on that road to health is by understanding your own condition. And some of that is obviously your symptoms and what triggers flares and, and those kinds of things. But understanding what your labs are is really important as well. Now, the double strand DNA and the complements that go up and down with disease are super important to know. But I also think it's important to know what antibodies were present that helped your doctor make the diagnosis in the first place. Now, to be fair, whether or not you have an anti-Smith antibody doesn't really change treatment. It doesn't usually go into your doctor's decision making when they're thinking about what treatments are going to be best for you. But this is a common scenario I see that I don't think a lot of people think about where understanding what antibodies you had present when you were diagnosed can be very useful. If you find yourself needing to change rheumatologist for whatever reason, maybe you moved, maybe your insurance changed, maybe you just want a second opinion, it's not uncommon for the new rheumatologist to try to reinvent the wheel. Now, sometimes that's perfectly reasonable and legitimate and maybe why you want a new doctor, but a lot of times it can, it can kind of be a waste of time. <laughs> so, one of the reasons we do that is if we don't have all the information we need to really understand this person in front of us and the type of lupus that they have. And one of the key pieces of information that can help us quickly understand what you've been dealing with is by understanding well, how was the lupus diagnosed in the first place. And that includes knowing your autoantibody profile, which includes the anti-Smith antibody. So knowing your own labs, knowing how the diagnosis was made, is just a good practice in case you ever need to see a new doctor. So that's it, short and sweet. Anti-Smith antibody, specific for lupus, not everyone has it, and it was named after Miss Stephanie Smith because she was the first one that it was found in. So, so I hope you found this useful. I hope you got some nuggets of information, took some notes, can take them back to your own doctor. Remember, your lab results are your results. You have every right to them. If you don't know what your anti-Smith result was, maybe you've had lupus for a long time and there's no question about your diagnosis, but you're just curious, you have every right to ask your doctor, hey, by the way, what was my anti-Smith antibody? Was it negative or was it positive? Just something to note down on in your medical records file that I hope everyone is keeping. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, like it, share it with anyone who you think could use this information. Here at Connected Rheumatology, we talk about all things rheumatology, immunology, diet and movement, and mental health and wellness because we believe it's all connected. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.